So if it's okay with you, James, maybe we could talk about the FDA grant work and try to set up a regular meeting from this point forward so that we could just start grinding through the, the grant proposal process. Uh, there's actually, uh, I, that is more than okay with me because it's uh, what I came here prepared to talk about. All right, I've the, got some of the documentation and some of our stuff ready for that. Awesome. The floor is yours. All right. So um, firstly, since I know this is being recorded to a wider audience, for those who are unaware, the Aquaphage project is currently looking into getting a FDA grant to allow us to host a conference uh, that should help pay for some of our necessities there if we wish to go along this path. Um, the full information on that grant can be found in the Slack. I have to remember which area it's in. It's probably... I think it's remote labs. I believe it's in the remote lab section. Yep. Yeah, thank you, Michelle. Um, you can find more information about the grant there. Uh, currently, what we have is we're going to be sending off a letter of intent to the FDA Office for the Center of for Food Safety and Applied Nutrition, who is the... Uh, which is the office most involved within what we want to do with the Aquafate project. Uh, we've got a letter pretty much drafted up. The only thing we need is, uh, actually, I can go, it, it, is, if it's all right, uh, I'd like to share my screen to show the letter that we have uh, drafted yeah, up go, so far. You should be able to. Go ahead. So, cool. Uh, that should be the letter there. This is our letter of intent. So to explain, this grant requires that we first go to one of the FDA's other offices and say, hey, here's what we're wanting to do. And then that office is going to talk to the FDA and say, hey, this, this organization, what they want to do, it does match the purpose of this grant. We're approving them to apply for the grant, not necessarily grant itself, but we're saying, hey, we're approving them applying to it. And thus we send out this for a letter of intent from the, uh, I'm just going to call them CF SAN because it's so much easier than going through their entire office name. Uh, this letter includes pretty much everything that we need from that. Our only exceptions are these few areas here that I just didn't and that I couldn't grab the information for until now. And that's part of what I wanted to bring up here was our last bits of information before we can look into sending this off to CF Sound and see if we can get a letter of advanced intent for this grant. Yeah, very um, good. That looks good. I would bump up the budget to like at least twenty six thousand. All right, I can do that. Yeah, we've been looking into venues in, in Little Rock, Arkansas, which is the city closest to ORI Remote Lab South. Uh, we've been looking into potential speakers, which would be important for when we write the actual grant application once we get the letter of advanced intent in. Um, the only bits that I need before we can send this off is I need to know if we're expecting any, if we're expecting any of our budget for this conference to come from other sources, because they want to know, you know, oh, hey, here's how much the conference overall is, we're expecting it to cost. And here's where other people that we're expecting to send in uh, funding from, where are we expecting that to be from? What kind of funding would we expect there? Yeah, we don't, we do not currently have any other sources of funding for this particular endeavor. All right. We can, Apparently. we can tr start trying to get some, um, but we don't. So we're, what we're doing is, um, yeah, this is, this would, is, this is the first uh, source of funding that we've s seriously pursued. So it, it is always good to kind of show that you, you can attract other, uh, other funding. So we can, we can talk about it um, and try to try to get some, some raised it's it's tricky um and i think that there's some stuff in the the uh the full uh foa the the announcement the financial opportunity or funding opportunity announcement where they talk about what is the allowed and disallowed things for this grant to to go towards and that actually provides a few clues on on additional sources of funding yeah. So it's kind of up to you and and your and your developing team about whether or not you want to try right now to go secure some other smaller matching funds. There might be there, undoubtedly there may be something in Arkansas that would provide matching, or that would throw in a few thousand dollars to to make this happen, and it may be good to do that at this time. Uh, but I wouldn't use it as a gating item since the getting this letter off to uh, CF San as soon as possible can only help us. Yeah. This one 
will hope to be our primary source of income. I, I've gone ahead and changed a bit of that letter to show that. And we can definitely look into some more local organizations for what we want to do here. Yeah. Um, the other bits I needed is I didn't know if ORI had its own like f uh, physical address and ways of contacting the organization rather than any of our individual members. Yes, we do. I'll give that okay. to you so you can awesome. fill it out. And the last bit is uh, they want the, to know our project director, and I don't know if that should be me or if that should be some other member of the Aquafage project. Yeah, that's a good question. Um, so for a primary investigator, you know, it's generally uh, a, a professional researcher. Uh, yeah, that's why I'm like, this should be yeah, someone else. Because <laughs> like, well, if they look into my background, it's like, ah, you're a you're a you're a bioengineering college student. Uh, yeah. Mm. <laughs> Yeah, uh, we could we could go ahead and try it with you as the project director, or we could try to recruit somebody to uh, to stand in to provide uh, you know a gray matter. I suppose is one of the ways that they uh, is one of the things that 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 happens. Um, you know, a lot of even commercial outfits uh, essentially keep some PhDs on retainer, and their job is to be director or PI and to provide a, a uh, impressive yeah. CV, but I think that we should be transparent and truthful. Um, you you really are the director of, of the project, and you know it, there are, there are uh, instructions in the uh, the packet that that we got from the solicit you know from the, the grant packet that just talks about how if you have multiple people, uh, so finding um, a good mentor is is something that I've been trying to to do. Uh, an advisor or a mentor or somebody that would agree to be the director and to to teach us uh, all that we need to know because we have the enthusiasm and the basic knowledge. But, you know, in order to pull off a scientific conference, I think we need to pull in some more uh, professional researchers. Yeah. So we'll, we'll let's keep working on it. And, you know, if we just can't find someone, um, and we did actually over the past week, I'll let you know, we, I, I path the it's a IPATH is a uh, institute at the University of California San Diego UCSD and they're a bacteriophage institute and you know for those of you listening this is a bacteriophage um, project that we're we're looking to to advance the practice of using bacteriophage and fish farming to reduce the dependency on uh, uh, you know, antibiotics, because uh, antibiotic resistance in fish farms is a growing serious problem that affects food supply, uh, and it's especially affects the food supply of vulnerable people. And there's not a whole lot of open source work here. So we're, we're hoping to, to stride forward and to, to make things better uh, for humanitarian reasons. Um, so I, I've been, con you know, IPATH shut down because of COVID. And they're back. They're coming back to life and and doing more and more. And they got back in touch with me from an inquiry that from two years ago, and they're very interested in what we're doing. But IPATH specializes in human-based bacteriophage work, so they're very interested in treating humans and doing human-based research. And so fish is not in is just not gelling with them. But they did a, a literature search and found that there are other researchers that are working in this area. And put me in touch. So awesome. this is a big step forward. So I think our next thing to do is to go ahead and reach out to the authors of the papers that they sent me and the, the contact information, and then talk about what we're trying to do to explain that we're applying for this grant for this for this workshop, uh, essentially, or, or a scientific meeting. And then, hey, you know, <laughs> would you be interested in being the director of this or being a, a principal investigator for the call i mean so this isn't a research grant it's it's much less stressful because it's a, a workshop and we can pull this off and and just to see if there's anybody that, on the list of, of people that might want to add their name uh, but since you're doing the work uh, i'd like for for you to to go to take ownership of it and to 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 be represented in the both the application here and if we're able to to get the grant uh, at the conference itself so don't, so, so yes, you should be. And and yes, we will also try to find uh, some some good mentors and people with experience in, in research and in meetings to um, 
to add their names and to make the grant as successful as possible uh, you know, when we when we submit it. All right. So I don't know, I guess that that opens up the question of of regular meetings. We can we can tail end on the FPGA stand up if it's convenient or we can pick a completely different day. Um, so I'm, that we... I'm perfectly all right coming in at the tail end of the FPGA meetings since I'm uh, I'm already trying to be here to be a part of these meetings about FPGA yeah. even if I'm not as involved with that project and I definitely don't mind because I've already got this time set aside and I don't have much I'm not like rushing out at the very end going oh I need to get to something else I, so I'm perfectly fine coming in at the end here okay so let's go ahead and keep this time and we'll just we'll go directly from FPGA meetup to to talking about um the you know, aquaphage and then then i'll just split the two recordings and publish them separately and that will i think that'll do it because anybody searching for it or wanting to focus on one set of work or the other then it'll be it'll be great for them yeah. and yeah and that work the time works for me really well so well i'm glad that's decided all right is there have you reached out to uams research people yet i have not um, we're currently looking through ums's uh directory of personnel trying to find individuals who would be a good fit in this project we're using some of our pre-existing contacts there to go and spread the word there but we don't have any individual personnel that we've yet reached out to okay is there any other research institutes that you know about is does fayetteville uaf have any I don't know if, if UAF has one. I would have to go and look because I know that they do some biomedical research at the University of Arkansas at Fayetteville. So I'd have to go and see if they have any interest in bacteriophage and those kinds of things, or if they, um, like IPATH back in California, are more focused on the human side than on the agricultural side or aquacultural side, as it may be. Right. And that may be something that we find at at most universities. They may be They may be focused on human um which is fine that and that's yeah. good the the reason why we didn't because we have had people in uh locally like right before covid when we were uh spooling this up um the the most frequently asked question was well how come you don't aren't working on humans and the answer is cost it's extremely expensive to do anything with people yeah. and like and going and experimenting and, and showing that we can do this in aquaculture isn't necessarily because what people think of first and foremost is always the the human problems but these are very much human problems that just aren't being considered as much because it's not it's not an individual directly in front of you who is sick but their food supply might be going away anyways in the background right this is a problem that needs to be addressed it's just not the main focus because everybody there is a general focus on how do we treat humans and this would be a cheaper this would be a cheaper investigation that still would help a lot of people and would help build a greater foundation of our understanding of bacteriophage right yeah if we can do this then we can we can move on to trickier things uh, not that this won't be tricky because i think anything water based is going to require some some particular skills and particular equipment that we may or may not have yet uh the stuff that the, the the small amount of equipment that we have here for bacteriophage assumes um uh, airborne captures you know so you take a filter and a, essentially a small vacuum and you go around and you you hunt down bacteriophage or or you go try like a, a lot of recent work has been oh you know we went and fished in a ditch and found all sorts of bacteriophage and gosh look what we found you know so water and air and 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 so on um you know so i mean there's tons of new skills that we will need to learn and i'm just i can't wait i'm very ready to to get this uh back up and this project back up and running okay so what i'll do is i'll send you what the ipath people sent me which was extremely helpful and it sounds very close to what we're doing and it was really nice to find another a bunch of published work recent published work about uh, bacteriophage and aquaculture and we'll go from there we'll just use this as a regular time and uh, and get it get it going 
I have no idea if the format of the letter is like what they're expecting, but it was good that the instructions laid out what needed to be included. And I guess sticking to the instructions, maybe this is just a formality. Um, you know, because I'm not sure. I'm not sure what level of description they're they're expecting, but but Neither it looks like a great draft start to me. Yeah. yeah, I I looked through their instructions. I ended up looking up other letters of intent that have been done in this kind of style before. And as you mentioned, I couldn't like find a you know oh hey here's the specific layout or the level of description that you need from this. Uh, yeah. The closest I can find, and that's actually was something I was going to mention as well, is that they're like it must be on institutional letterhead, and I don't know what that looks like for ORI. <laughs> Oh, we do. We actually have letterhead. So it's okay, cool. uh, what it what it means is is um so it's, it just it it means use your letterhead. So your 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 logo and all of your formal information are at the top. Yeah. Um to show that it that it's official correspondence from from the corporation. And yes, we can totally do that. So we have that all awesome. set up as a template. So as soon as we get the wording right and all the information settled down, um, then then we can send them uh do they do they want a pdf or do they want it on paper do we know uh, that part i do not know i think it was submitted i think everything was submitted it, it, by email That's yeah it was submitted a... by el which, okay. which would suggest me to to me ah sorry i'm starting over my own words here which, which would suggest to me either a pdf or a just an, any form of digital documentation okay yeah we can easily make a pdf from the from the letterhead so that, no problem cool Okay, any other questions or comments or anything? Oh yeah, the, let's see, uh, this is back to, to FPGA, but um, do you have any contacts with any electrical engineering universities locally or at UAF? Have you started reaching out to them? Is it too early yet for Remote Lab South to get the FPGA stations um, offered uh -huh. to universities? I think we're a bit early on that, though we okay. have been looking into some of the uh, electrical engineering community here. Okay. But I, yeah. I, I don't think we're yet in a position to be fully offering our, our facilities to students. Okay, yet. keep it up to try to get some contacts, especially the universities are always worth trying, uh, yeah. you know, but the, the other organizations, other open source organizations or you know, for open source professionals uh, or commercial open source is probably going to be a better bet. Or better match, um, but yeah, please start start and keep talking to them because it takes time to develop some, you know, get meetings. And we'll we'll why not let's just go ahead and hit that harder after DefCon in mid August. So, you know, sounds very good to me. We'll touch base back after that. Cool. All right. Any other questions or comments or anything you need? Uh, nothing on my end. All right. Thanks so much. We will uh, meet again. I think yeah, we'll, we can meet again next week. Nobody's yeah. Nobody's away. Uh, looking forward to that. All right. See you soon. See you soon.